right, so the first setting that we're going to work on is going to be the um, portrait mode, which is everybody's favorite mode. This is the mode that you find taking selfies in or taking some macros and works very, very well. And you'll notice that I have the three grids up and I have these square that's moving around my face here and um, it reads natural lighting at the bottom and so those are the default settings what i want to do is go through very quickly and show you the different uh buttons here and for the purposes of this because it's a training video and i want my hands free to hit buttons and stuff i am using a tripod it's not necessary there's a good stabilizer in the iphone um so when i am taking selfies for example i wouldn't um i wouldn't be looking for stabilization i wouldn't have to worry about having that on a uh, tripod when I'm taking photos outside, I might, but most of the time for the context of the class we're talking about now, we're talking about storytelling on the go. You're not going to be whipping out a tripod stuff. So, all right. So when we look on the screen, I have got this in uh, landscape mode. Is that a portrait? So portrait will be up, landscape will be across. And in landscape mode, you'll look at the top left hand corner and you see there's an F with a circle around it. And the F with the circle around it is going to give us the ability to change our focus point and basically the, the, uh, the softness of the background. So I'm gonna sub be the subject here. I'm what the picture is being taken of. And so I'm gonna tap on my face. And when I tap on my face, you can see the square gets smaller. It now zeroes in on what I'm gonna be recording. And I can then adjust my finger to the right of that square where you see the little sun to make the room lighter or darker. And so I'm gonna give a little bit of depth there. And now that I've hit the F in the top left-hand corner, you'll notice that this bar in the right hand shows up. And when I scroll that up or down, it actually will soft focus or change the focus point for me to make the background more blurred, give that more depth uh, feel that we talked about earlier. And so um, I'm gonna hit that. So I'm the focus, I got my lighting set and I can use the F for the focus uh, to change the F stop of the lens and tell me again how clear my foot my subject is which in this case is me and then how the background isn't and underneath of that f you'll see that little that little carrot the little uh, arrow and when you click that it pops up a series of menu items on the right here right above your shutter button or right next to your shutter button and i'm going to go through those now so at the very bottom you're going to see that there is a flash uh, with a line through it i don't use flash hardly ever when i'm taking photos on my iphone and so i have disabled that you can do that by default we talked about settings earlier in the session and then down here you'll see on the left hand side in the bottom corner there is also a button to be able to control your flash you can quickly turn the flash on or off for your photos back to the right you can see that there's the, the flash with the line through it over top of that there's a plus and minus when you click that that's actually changing the amount of light exposure allowed in the screen in the uh, camera and so if you're seeing like this is very very dark and I want to lighten it up a little bit I can there do remember that you're going to have the option you want some good balance light um, white light but you're going to be able to, to edit this later in uh, Lightroom or whatever app you're using and so I'm just going to make that a little bit there the next button up over the plus minus for the um, lighting is going to be the timer so either three seconds or 10 seconds delay so if i put that on three seconds i hit the shutter button it'll count down to three and then take my photo this is good if you're trying to set the camera and then take off to go get the picture you know because you want to take an action shot back here and you uh want to use a timer to give you the three to ten seconds to get there um, if you're an apple watch user there's also a shutter button on your your thumb or your watch rather so you can hit that on your watch when you're in place and it also has a three to ten second timer on it and then over top of that i don't ever use this this is pre-applying a filter I, i'm you can see that i can go through the filters here it'll tell me what it looks like i just take that that picture as it is and then um and then go from there and then over top of that again is the uh, f-stop that's the focus point here so i want a little bit of fuzziness in the background and then that's it and then you can see that to the right of that f is the um, circle that rotates the camera from either the front camera or the back camera and right now we're in selfie mode and i'm using the, uh, the the front camera and so then there's the shutter button and so if that if i had put a timer on there three seconds i'm gonna go put a timer three seconds and hit the shutter button it's going to count down two three one and i take my photo and then i can go back and i can turn that off and it'll stay on until you close the app and whatever last settings you had there now, going back to the left of the camera, I'm gonna click that arrow or 
care button again. And that is going to change and get rid of those settings. But if you notice now on the left hand side of the screen, you can see that it says F for 3.5. That's the F stop. That's the 3.5 F stop tells you what the focus point is. Underneath of that, you can see a 0 0.3. That's my exposure or my lighting. And then underneath of that, you can see that the flash is still turned off. And I'm just going to take a picture now. And it takes the picture and it's processing in the background. And then you can see in the bottom right hand corner, that is that little square is the picture that I took and opens up iPhotos to go and grab that. The last thing I'll show you on the um, uh, portrait mode is these little boxes here. And these little boxes here, when you close the other menu we're talking about, gives you some preset lighting. And so I'm in natural light, which is just whatever's in the room. And then you can see here that the next step over is studio light, which is supposed to give you, you can see it, it softens my face. I'm looking all soft now and blemish free. And the next one over is contour lighting, which is giving you, it's really focusing this light here, right in the center of your subject or your face. And when I click on here, I make some adjustments down, it'll still keep that contour lighting on my face. Um, this one is just to, if you take a photo, if you're taking a really close photo, it'll blacken out. Now, for people like me, and you know, again, I'm doing this for real estate agents, so we're an older group of people generally uh, speaking. Um, that whole like professional actor model lighting, where you get all this black lighting like this, um, my white hair, my grain doesn't blend really well in there. I'm wearing a black t-shirt. So I, it looks a little weird to me. I'm not a big fan of it. I thought I would be when it first came out, but it doesn't work great for me. Uh, it might for other people, especially for those of you who uh, still have color in your hair or color your hair, you know who you are, you put your makeup on, it'll look great for you. It doesn't work for, for a lot of people. So play with it. I mean, give it a shot and see what happens and then uh, go from there. And then you can scroll over here and there is a black and white filter and then there's a black and white focus filter. So those are, you can play with those and see if any of those set work with you. They don't necessarily for me, but um, you know, not a lot of stuff works for this. This is pretty basic. We can get. So, anyway, so that is the portrait mode. And now we're gonna go outside and look at the photo mode and the future uh, features that they have there. Okay, so we are here now taking a picture of, well, a tire swing in the backyard because this is what worked for me. Um, that's a tire swing that my daughters asked me to set up and install for them, and I risked my life climbing up in a tree to do it, and they never used it more than once. But, you know, that's parenting. So we're taking a picture here of a tire swing, and when you look at this, again, I've got my camera in landscape mode. Portrait mode would be simply rotating it up so that you get this picture. And in this case, my subject is a tire swing. I don't really want the pipes from the back of my house or my neighbor's house in the frame. So then this would probably be a better frame for this. But I want to first start you off with landscaping. And you can see I got my rule of nine, uh, my, uh, yeah, my rule of thirds here. And I'm going to move the camera a little bit so that that tree is in the left-hand quadrant there even though I want that tire really to be the, the subject of this photo, I'm just gonna start with there. So I've got now um, my screen here, and just like the portrait mode I showed you, down here at the bottom, I changed from portrait mode. Portrait mode would be much more focused. Uh, this would still work for this particular uh, photo, but I'm gonna go to photo mode here. And we're gonna go through some basics again. So on the left-hand side, you can see that there is a, a couple circles there with a line through it. And when I click on that, that turns on or off the live photo button. Now, when we went through the um, actual uh, settings earlier in this program, uh, I showed you how to turn off live photos. I am not a big fan of at all of live photos. Uh, it, live photos actually takes uh, about uh, three to five seconds, I don't remember, I think it's three seconds of really more video than live. That's why somebody's text you a photo and you look at it, there's like this motion movement thing going on. I hate it, uh, so I turn it off. It does have a benefit. There is a good feature for that that I'll go over at the end of this. Uh, but for right now, I'm gonna make sure that's always turned off. And again, in the bottom left-hand corner, um, I've turned off flash because I never ever shoot with flash. Um, there are some times to do it, but it, not normally would I be using my iPhone for a, a moment that required uh, a flash photo. Um, and again, you play with that and decide what you like, that's just me. And so again, just like when we were doing the um, 
uh, portrait mode in the right hand side there's a circle with the two buttons that moves you between front and back cameras and in the bottom right hand corner you see that little square that is to get the iPhotos where you have downloaded your photos and you can um, uh, go see what you've done there and then you can take your finger and move between the different video fun or photo and video functions uh, there's pano which we'll talk about in just a minute portrait which we discussed just before this and then i'm in my standard photo in this particular program just for length we don't talk about video or slow-mo or all the rest uh, that will be a different uh, program or class or video all right so now i'm in photo now in the photo itself, you'll see there is a 2, a 1X, and a 0.5. If you'll notice in the back of your iPhone, there is, if you have the newer iPhone, there are three cameras. Those are the three different lenses that um, iPhone uses to make a composite and blend into one solid photo. And so I can switch between those three lenses, and 0.5 means I'm zooming out, point, or 1X is where I normally am. And then 2x is zooming in to uh, my subject. And in this case, 2x is where I want to be because I'm really trying to get a picture of that, uh, that uh, tire swing. And so uh, I'm going to go back to one just for our class. Now, you remember in the setting, I wanted to see things outside of the frame. So if you're looking at my screen now, you'll see to the right is my neighbor's uh, corner of their house and their pool house. And then to the left, you'll see the back of my uh, house and a little bit of the deck in the far left. What's graded out in black won't be in your photo unless you've put, uh, created a setting for that. And so I still got my subject right there in the middle. Now I'm going to go uh, into this left hand side in the center you're going to see that there is again that carrot or that menu and that opens up uh, a couple other menu items and some of these one of the two of these you'll see that weren't in the portrait mode and so again in the bot starting in the bottom you'll see the flash with the line through it says i don't want flash over top of it is again a uh, live auto on or off i always want that off remember if you set it in the setting the camera settings to re preserve your last settings then if you turn the live photo off it'll always be off if you don't have that in your settings then a live photo will be the default i to this day can't understand why but it will um some people really like square photos so we have 4.3 or 16 by 9 16 by 9 gives you that rectangle feel 4 by 3 is your more square photo which is what people are not only accustomed to or um, a ratio rather and basically it's saying four par parts across three parts down and then the square is just the square and Again, a lot of people like the square photo because it's perfect for Instagram. Uh, it fits right in there. You don't have to do a whole lot of editing or cropping. And so that would be where you'd want to go. I like 4x3. It gives you a little, few more options. 16x9 uh, if I'm doing a big landscape or big scene or something. Uh, but 4x3 is probably my default. And then you send, again, see the plus or minus so we can change the lighting absorption of the lens. So we're moving that, that lens a little open, more open to collect more lighting in our photo. Um, and you can do whatever you feel is comfortable there. Again, we have a timer for three to 10 seconds. And then lastly, we have the filter. If you want to pre-apply pre a filter, I recommend that you don't. I think you just take the photo and then you can edit it, uh, do post-editing in Lightroom if you want to. And so that's really it for the photo um, features. It's not super complicated, but you can take a bunch of different ways in order to get your photo to work just right. So I'm gonna go down to two here i'm going to go to change my settings to from 4.3 to square because this is intended to go on um instagram and then i'm just going to hit the shutter button and there's my picture and then i take my picture and i can go to lightroom and start editing it from there so that's it that's your photo so right now my neighbors are wondering why i'm standing in the middle of the yard spraying water out of the hose and taking a picture of it but for you guys i'm doing this so this is a example of long exposure so i'm going to be using you can use this for anything lights and traffic or whatever but i'm just going to squeeze the trigger here for the hose and i can take a regular picture and then you can see yeah it's okay that's a regular picture when i have live on this is really the only reason why i would use live is i can push up on the photo and you can see that it creates some animation or at the end, it creates a long exposure. And so now I can go ahead and show that long exposure, which looks a lot more attractive than just the water of the hose. And if I hold down on it, you can, can take see. a regular picture. If I hold the picture, you can see what it was before I made the edits. And that's just a smoother look. And so there's another example. 
Um, this is again, this is just water coming out, but when I do this, you see the rainbow, you see this nice long exposure for the hose, and it's just more attractive. All right, so this is our panorama panoramic mode and you can get there by just switching down at the bottom taking your finger and swiping across and you can see that there's a couple components here there is the yellow line in the middle to keep you centered the white arrow to keep you level and um and then it's going to start you can do left to right or right to left i like doing left to right this is particularly good if you've got a big field or big area that you're trying to capture uh, i've used it recently for a baseball stadium i've used it for farmland uh anything like that so you don't have to take it the full width. And I think a lot of people get frustrated with this because it does make like this fisheye thing if you do the whole thing. You can do it just the area you need it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click the shutter button and it just starts. I don't have to hold the shutter button down, it just starts. I capture what I want and notice that the, the, uh, the white arrow uh, tells me when I'm in line with the yellow line to keep me on track. And if I'm not, or if I go too fast, the phone will tell me. The other benefit to this is not just for doing landscaping, but also if I want to do um, like low angle for a big building or something like that, this is particularly good. So I'm gonna go to landscape mode where I start at the bottom of this particular tree. I click the shutter button and I'm gonna be able to climb up the tree this way. And I hit the shutter button and stop. And you can see now I've got this very full picture of the tree uh, that I would never have gotten from that camera without using the panoramic mode. And now you can see how big and beautiful that particular tree is, just like you could a big building or, or tall, anything you're looking at that, that's big. So big fan of the pano mode. It's very user-friendly. It's very forgiving um, and it's very functional.